Hello, welcome everyone. This is Mathino. I have a guest with us today who's an alum of Bottle. His name is Nathaniel. <laughs> Just, just threw me out. <laughs> like, whoa. You, you are, you're our special guest for today. <laughs> and um, he's an alum. And so he's going to be helping me run today's practice. Um, we had a quick power earlier because um, he will be um, substituting for a practice later on down the line. And he may be helping um, facilitate other instructional activities later on down the line. So we were just doing some programming and organizing as it relates to that. Um, and so, yeah, so um, he decided because he has he has this room available where he has some free time, he decides to stick around for a few more moments longer. So to say hi and to help us with um, these next up upcoming activities. All right, so today, um, before we get started, of course, you know who I am. I'm Athena. I help run today's practice, but I'll give a few moments to Nathaniel for him to introduce himself to um, some of the folks who are new to debate this year and tell them what do you like about Bottle and why are you coming back? All right. Um, hi, I'm Nathaniel. Um, I'm an Oakland Tech alum. Um, I was in Bottle for four years in high school. Um, and as you guys can see, Athena was dragged me back kicking and screaming through slack um and now i'm back here but uh real talk like i i really love debate it got me through high school um it was really cool it was just like it just felt like this like new opening that i found and i was like um just getting getting to do public speaking in that way where it's just critical and it's philo philosophical that was something that just made me really really excited and having an outlet to be able to do that which is something that was really exciting for high school me and then Bottle, of course, is like, it's the medium through which I got to do that. And so it's in that way, like throughout my great career, they've been, it's been everything. It's, yeah. Well, thank you. All right. <laughs> Thanks for that. Um, so yeah, we are both myself and Nathaniel are both UDL alums and we have now, and they're still embarking on new um, leadership opportunities him, himself and myself. We're both embarking on new leadership opportunities. So Bottle has continued to provide us with benefits. So um, yeah, or yes, Urban Debate Leagues. Um, well, now I'm a part of the Bottle family um, for long term. So yes, it continues to provide us with benefits. Um, so today's activity, we're going to get started. I'm going to let Nathaniel lead the way with some speaking drills. And so I'll let you have the floor. All right. Um, so let's get started. Um, so speaking drills, I'm so we can, we can start with just like speaking fast. So you guys know what that means. Just read as, read as fast as you can, as clearly as you can. Right. Imagine the judge in the back of the room is like scowling at you. They want to hear everything you're able to say. If they can't, you'll get marked down. So just, you know, stay calm, remember, clear and fast. But prioritize clarity over speed. Um, I'll set a timer for about, I think, like three minutes, probably good. That sound good to you guys? All right, cool. Yeah, I'll set a timer for three minutes. And you guys just take out anything you want and read it. We'll go for three minutes and then we'll stop. Ready, set. Hey, 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 Mike should be on. I don't hear a, a darn thing. <laughs> Juxtaplation is like a placement for two more things side by side, often in order to bring out their differences. Metaphors, an analogy that creates another idea that's similar to something. Use a term or phrase that later suggests similarity. Little notes, a particular understatement of finds an opposite word of which otherwise can be used. Parallelism, a device which imbalance can be identified as successive words, phrases, or a similar very grammatical structure. Polysemitism. A statistical device in which coordinating junctions and or but not nor um, succession in order to be artistic in effect. Sentinema, a figure of arguments in which wise, witty, or well-known saying is used to like sum up the preceding material. Simile, a comparison between two unlike things, a word as or like, as or like. Trilicon, the use of words or phrases and examples of beginnings and endings of phrases and sentences and threes. 
Rhetoric. According to Aristotle, rhetoric is the seeming belief the beginning of everything that persuasion all that boils down into blame, values, and choice. Ethos is how you convince the audience of your great ability. Logos is how you convince logic and reason. Pathos is how you convince um, emotion. Devices. Alliteration repeats the same letter sound with just several words in sequence. Illusion is sort reference to a famous person or event. Amplification is speech with several words or expressing miles more details to it or emphasizing more something. Anodopolis. The repetition of the last word or clause sentence may beginning of the next analogy. A metaphor or long sibling in which comparison is made between two things in order to line of reasoning and is the end of so short and interesting amusing event often throws the best a point and rank is to a reader's life and vividly a word of replacement phrases successive clauses but in reverse order antithesis a word of phrase opposites original position conduct a repetition of words or words a general term for repetition theory to something specific meaning words and adaptation phrases hypothermia a figure of which the um, satire of questions or objects is a asked or started by answer a speaker reading aloud juxtaposition a placement of two things side by side in order to bring out their um, differences metaphor analogy at well, connects one thing to another using a term of phrase that literally doesn't suggest it neither. Really. I don't know, would you try to tell you the molecular practice of the best thing? That three minutes? Keep I never spent the majority of summer at Middleton College. I was in the France of a club, but I've never been to Vermont. Of all places, I did not as a dull across people. 37 years. I regret this. Sometimes I did not let travel the travel of New York and childlike amazement. Turns out, by the American team. The last year, I've been loved before this. I was like saying time for like a good like 10 seconds. I realized I was muted. And it's just really unfortunate. <laughs> it's going to show up on the recording as me just being like, oh. don't worry. Um, anyway. So yeah, next up, um, what do you guys normally do next? Do you guys do like backward speaking? Yeah. Let's do, yeah, let's do backward next then. Um, so speaking, so reading backwards, you're not saying the words backwards, you're just saying the, back, the words, you're just reading the words in reverse order. So I ate a sandwich, sandwich uh, ate I ate I. So reminder, unmute, <laughs> please unmute. I wanna hear you guys. Um, yeah, timer for you can just do three minutes again, and then we'll get going. And yeah, you just pull something out and read it. All right, ready, go. I college in minor English and was I sciences then arts liberal for the suited suited better be my of matter a not what does this classes my of majority the failed I when years were there student achieving low remarkably I a was I. Uh, school in years so or 15 my during indeed student achieving high a then never i had um me too knew totally were in it master two required rituals but the the but atlantic uh, of readers the too familiar be well may um exercise of sort this um stanza a recite had to uh we day each and memory from the maritime veritime broadside poland's french some of reaction the for a uh, responsible were we class literature my in week each and lower the on words test my uh, scores test my tier second the on classmates my with compared encore de la say uh, words too by i lived i summer entire for uh, the for language lovely frenchman for some uh, mangled i our liking every at understand not i understand not did i that me to something said someone our viking f every at and left to do my escape what no was there me then better heard and uh, better read better wrote better spoke with interacted i people of majority the see reading really me to talk she or he provided speaker french a understanding uh, generally and agreement gender and verb sans note short french a understand uh, a right difficulty some with story a recount coffee a order could i meaning here second the in was i master a degree masters pursuing were who those two upwards scaling and word speak a speak barely could we who those with starting students french of tears five there were there next offering did you what just was it, it explained she met languages multiple spoke world my in everyone asked i happened this ha did how child was a um she sense no yeah, dumb louder oh, and it's french Hi. and english german Is that what oh just get it like get it louder i can hear sam what is up with that <laughs> 
I can, can what? Um, just louder, speak up, more volume. Let's begin. Uh, spoke, who, woman, to A, to talk once, I, parents, it's high, achieving high, by, back, to each, children, achieving high, of, flock, A, but, child, achieving high, one, nearly not, it, is, it, compounds, and, in self, reinforces, capital, social, how, is, this, as high, achievers, high, scholastic, were, who, parents, had, them, of, many, sure, am, I, them, around, achievers, a scholastic, other, by, reinforced, been, likely, had, and, All right, that's time. high, is that, that is like when you're like in a speech it's like i don't know i realized this like sometime last year when when i was like doing my tournaments and stuff but it was like it it comes out so much easier if you're like at the you're like in the weird spot between like conver conversational talking and shouting <laughs> so you're, you're projecting a lot and so it's not normal conversational talking but you're also not screaming you know what i mean yeah like in between there it'll it'll make it it'll make it easier and so that's kind of what i was trying to get you get you guys to get at but yeah yeah i think zoom doesn't really do an accurate like that's also true what we sound like because like i was screaming into the microphone <laughs> and i don't know yeah, it's it like whoa projection <laughs> <laughs> um do you guys normally do a third one um we can do another one um I'm just like, I can't give you the quiz. <laughs> but, I mean, I can't give you a quiz. You guys want a quiz? We can like, we can make it happen. But it's just like, it won't be the quiz. Quizzing on Pal Fury. Um, <laughs> you can do another um, drill if you like. All right. Usually, Mathina gives us like a really complicated word to say in between each of the words. Like instead of using taco, he gives us like a really long word. What? <laughs> oh yeah. He don't really give you. Centricism. <laughs> Optimal. Was he gave us, I think, like reverse somethingism. How do you guys feel about like etymology? Etymology? Yeah. Oh God. Yes, <laughs> do it, do it, do it. Did you just get out of class or something? <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's not the point. That's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> Oh um, my. no, yeah. All right. Etymology between every word, you know, like I et etymology, eight etymology, uh, et See, if I can do it, you guys can do it. It'll be fine. All right. All right. So we'll just have the time. Wait, sorry, Ella, were you gonna say something? How do you say it? Um just et etymology. Etymology. Uh, etymology? Yeah. Etymology. All right. Um also start another three three minute timer and we can get uh, going. Oh. Oh, it sounds like someone tried to say something. It was like all staticky. I was very confused. But <laughs> yeah, we can just get started then. Right. Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry. Y'all get out. All right. <laughs> so I'm gonna be Who's being booted. <laughs> oh god. He just typed. Hmm. Hate the drill. I'm starting. Oh, I think he started the timer. Oh, I see. Okay. <laughs> I etymology spent etymology the major etymology majority etymology of etymology this etymology etymology at etymology Millbury etymology college etymology studying etymology at etymology blood cold etymology France etymology 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 had Etymology, never etymology, been etymology, too, etymology, Vermont, etymology, I, etymology, have etymology, been etymology, been etymology, many etymology, places etymology, at etymology, all etymology, I, etymology, did, etymology, not etymology, have etymology, and etymology, adult etymology, passport etymology, until etymology, I, etymology, was etymology, 37 etymology years, etymology, old etymology. Yes. Etymology, 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 regret, etymology, this etymology, and etymology, and etymology, then etymology, sometimes etymology, not etymology, learning etymology, ed to etymology, travel etymology, when etymology, your etymology, older etymology, allows you to talk, allows etymology, 
two etymology B L etymology G young etymology D again etymology two etymology B two etymology B dot etymology childlike etymology amazing etymology that etymology is etymology so etymology often etymology dull etymology away etymology by etymology adult etymology things etymology in etymology dot etymology past etymology year etymology I etymology have etymology seen etymology more of the etymology of the world of etymology world etymology then etymology at etymology any etymology point etymology before etymology and the and etymology thus etymology I dot etymology have etymology been etymology filled etymology with etymology that etymology juvenile etymology feeling etymology more etymology times etymology then etymology i etymology can etymology count etymology at etymology a etymology train etymology station etymology in etymology statusburg etymology in etymology and etymology old etymology parisian etymology bookstore on etymology on etymology a etymology wide etymology anime etymology the in etymology in londale etymology is what etymology that was etymology no etymology different etymology in etymology vermont etymology where etymology the etymology green Oh, Elamaji Mountains, Elamaji Loon, Elamaji Like, Elamaji Giants, Elamaji I, Elamaji Wood, Elamaji Stair, Elamaji At, Elamaji These, Elamaji the Dattons, Elamaji the Out, Elamaji the Up, Elamaji the Of, the Up, Elamaji the Back, Elamaji Window, Elamaji the Up, Elamaji the The, Elamaji the Babus, Elamaji the Thalamus, Elamaji Library, I, Elamaji Wood, Elamaji Watch, Elamaji the The, Elamaji the Clouds, Elamaji the Witch, Elamaji the Foy Four, Elamaji the Elamaji the Rain, Elamaji the Droop, Over, Elamaji Over, Elamaji the The, Elamaji the Mountains, Elamaji Like, Elamaji Lampshades, Elamaji and Elamaji I elemaji would elemaji wonder elemaji what elemaji precisely elemaji I elemaji had elemaji been elemaji bith my like doing elemaji with elemaji my elemaji wife elemaji I elemaji was elemaji there elemaji two elemaji improve elemaji my elemaji French elemaji am I elemaji Jesus that's time. Good job. You guys probably went for more than three minutes, so I just like kept left you guys going while I was walking out of the room. <laughs> but sorry about that. I got kicked out. Thanks for just doing the drill anyway, though. Yeah, I just I moved outside, so now I'm out here. I think my connection should still be okay. I think I'm close enough to the building where it's not gonna be a problem. But just as I say that, the Wi-Fi goes down a bar. What? What is this? But yeah, um, do, um, I guess just. I feel like three is plenty. So I'm just gonna say like, is there anything, anything you guys wanna know from while we wait for Mathena to be ready? Or any, I don't know, anything I can help you with. <laughs> wait, so you're in, we call it a uh, San something? Santa? I'm in Santa Cruz, yeah. Oh yeah, there. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. You guys are about to dox me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm doing some shameless plugging. Wow, you know, with his vegan, sweet, and salty. <laughs> You're just watching the show at this point. It's from my girl Tabitha Brown. From Target, that's our new Target collection. And as at Target today, they have a new Black, I don't know, Black History. I don't, I don't know what you call it. I don't. I don't oh, um, I was at my sister Danny had a tour of OSA yesterday, and they actually showed that because it was made by a graduate of uh, OSA yeah. in the digital media, or now called media arts, the pathway. Yes, she's from HBO. She's from um. Does she? She was a, a part of some design challenge. That's her right there. Hmm. Anyways, all right. Uh, moving forward. So really quickly, um, I just want to share this with you all. Um, just so y'all can see it on Slack. Um, I don't know if y'all saw it on Slack. Let me pull up Slack first, so I don't be wrong about that. Um. Uh, I did post a video yesterday. 
just to do a quick refresher on uh, topicality. Um, so if you want to refresh on what topicality is, please check Slack. There's a video posted. Define pedagogy. Anybody? Yeah. Okay. Uh, like I said, um, or it said define the pedagogy of the pressed. Mm -hmm. it's, well, yes, define pedagogy of the press. So I said the pedagogy of the press is a philosophical way to combat oppression with dialogue. Okay, anybody else? Harper? I don't remember what I wrote. Okay, Ella? I said that it was in the pedagogy of the oppressed is a new system which the oppressed reject their duality they have created in their minds a sub oppressor and liberate themselves through dialogue reflection and action this must be done in solidarity not by oneself okay <laughs> okay um the answer i put as the key answer was the method and practice of teaching, especially as an academic subject or theoretical concept, and is influenced by the social, political, and psychological development of learners, which was the definition I gave you um, on the slide. So again, when I provide slides, take notes, take notes. <laughs> Next one. <laughs> this one was weird. Hold on, am I recording? I am recording, I'm sorry. So the next question is name the title, name the title, name the title of the book and author and which became the muse and inspiration for Paulo Freire's book, Pedagogy of the Oppressed. That's easy. I, what do you mean that's easy? How the hell is that easy? Because I said the answer in the presentation. Oh my. No one remembers. <laughs> Anyone remembers I ran to go get the book and it's on the YouTube. All right, well, I said, um, we call it phenomenology of the spirit. No, and <laughs> wrong answer. You don't like Hegel? No, it was not Hegel. This is why you should take notes. It was in the presentation. And remember, I posted that presentation on YouTube. No, yeah, but where would they see that in the <laughs> book? It wasn't in the book. It was, I said, I'll be testing. Exactly. I it said, the listen, book, no, no, you don't listen, which is the problem. I said, I would be testing over the video, over the presentation, and over the book. That's what I said I would be doing. Okay. So what was it? The I'm answer curious. was France Fernand, Wretched of the Earth. Oh, and, really? And, and you could have Googled that. So, it's well, no we, we're not allowed to Google it. Who said you couldn't? It's an open what? book. Are you serious? It's I an open to book test. test. Open right, book implies only the book, not Google. What kind of teacher are you? <laughs> what? Next one. Oh, hey, class, you can just use Google. It's okay. <laughs> what is the central theme of Freer's pedagogy? Oh, my God. You're crazy. What was the answer? <laughs> Wait, so we were allowed to use Google the whole time? I mean, you could have. Who, how was I going to All know? right, you know what? I want to retake this test. No. It's so much easier with Google. You wouldn't have found that on Google anyway. All right. Of course I find it on Google. <laughs> you know what? Let me find it right now. I will find it right now for you. I already found it. I, I already tried. The answer. All right, so what <laughs> is the central theme of Fierce Critical Pedagogy? Harper, what is your answer? What is the central theme of Freer's critical pedagogy? But I believe that I wrote um, that the oppressed can only free themselves, can only um, become free when they realize their own oppression and uh, work to combat it. And that uh, I, I really don't remember my answer, but. Um, Yep. Yeah, I have no that, idea what I wrote. That, that's, that's the answer. That's good. It's not the exact wording, but I'll take that. Yep. Anybody I else? Said, 
The central theme is combating oppression with dialogical education. Okay. Um, okay, I'll take... What, you, what was your answer, Sam? The central theme is combating oppression with dialogical education. I'll take that. It says here, the belief that teaching should challenge learners to examine power structures and patterns of inequality within the status quo. So I'll take that. What'd you have, Ella? I didn't know what I, to say, so I just put... <laughs> I'm not really sure what I put. Okay. Well, that's the answer right there. What'd you say? I said just like about liberation and dialogue. Okay. But that's kind of the answer too. Um, but yeah, so somewhere around using words like the belief that teaching should challenge learners to examine power structures and patterns of inequality within the status quo <laughs> for some kind of answer along those lines. All right. Name three of the 10 tenets of the banking education system. Anybody want to name any of them? I know this one. Uh, I wrote down four of the banking, concept, banking concepts of education things during when we were doing the slideshow thing. Okay, go ahead. Teacher teaches students. The students are taught. The teacher knows everything. Students know nothing. That's good. The teacher Anybody thinks wants and the students are taught are thought the teacher thinks and the students are thought about. And the teacher teaches and the students listen. Did she get all of the 10? No, well, that was just, I only wrote down four. I didn't get four. all of them. Okay. We're only supposed to name three, so you're good. All right, does anybody want to add to the list? No? Um, I put teacher teaches, students are taught, teacher knows everything, students know nothing, and teacher thinks and students are thought about. Okay just in case people need to take reference so i have the actual physical copy i don't i don't know where sometimes how the pages don't line up with the pdf i think the pages are a little bit different but in page 73 of the actual physical copy um that's where you find uh, i still can't believe we could use google this whole time right god damn it Mathena. next time i'm taking your test mm -mm. no google next time okay <laughs> Um, I was joking. There's no Google. All right. So uh -huh. for the banking education, um, here are the 10 tenets that can be found on page 73. Um, it yeah, says, we know where they are. Hey, shush. <laughs> page 73. Um, you can also find it in the PDF uh, around somewhat the same page. Um, PDF, it's, uh, where'd it go? It's the very start of chapter two. Yes, it is. Um, no, it should be chapter. No, it's chapter two. Chapter two. Yeah, it is chapter two. It's actually the first page after chapter two. It's at the top of chapter two. Yeah. Um, anyways, so it's on page seventy-one for the uh, thing in Watson. PDF. The PDF is seventy-one. Okay. So for if you have the actual book physical copy, it's seventy-three. Um, it says the teacher acts and the student have the illusion of acting through the action of the teacher. The teacher chooses the program content and the students who are not consulted adapt to it. The teacher confuses the authority of knowledge with his or her own professional authority, which she sets in opposition to the freedom of the student. So those are just additional tenets of Bacon education system. All right. Pedagogy of the press is a, um, is a, is a framework for anti-colonialism. True. True, yes. Pedagogy of the Press is a framework for anti-colonialism. But not exclusively. Right. All right. Define praxis in terms of fear scholarship. What does he mean by praxis? Um, so proxies are acts. In fear of scholarship, these acts reinforce or combat oppression. You said what it does, but you didn't say what it, what does it mean? What does it mean? I by said in fear of scholarship, these acts reinforce or combat oppression. That's not the answer. What? Well, what's the answer? Anybody else want to give it a try before I give the answer? That it's a practice for the oppressed to find liberation. What was your answer, Sam? 
I said praxis are X. In theory, scholarship, these X reinforce or combat oppression. That's what proxies in terms of fairy scholarship is. Mm -mm, I'm not going to give it to you. Nope. What do you mean you're not going to give it to me? Them words are not close enough for me. What, you mean words are not close enough say, what did you say, Ella? <laughs> I said it's a practice in the way for the oppressed to liberate themselves. Yeah, but what is that practice? Not close enough. All right, so here's the answer. It was in the slideshow, and it also can be found on page 52 in the book and probably page 49 in the PDF. It states that praxis, this is his actual word, is the use of reflection and action. You have to reflect and act. And it goes, and I provided a diagram in the slideshow too. Um, it's a reflection and action upon the world in order to transform it. So you have to take transformative reflection and action in order to, cha to change it. And remember we talked about how that's a constant action. You're constantly doing it. Nathino, that's what I said. Proxies is acts and that they reinforce or combat oppression. And might I you add the word some reflect. text evidence for you? You're missing you the know. word reflect. I'm not giving it to you. And no, that's bullshit. You have I to answer it. directly. Y'all don't answer questions no, directly. No, I got it. Proxies are asked. No, that's not the answer. All right, Proxies move on. If you continue, obviously you're not, if you were responding to things directly, you would be winning more debates. So, mm -hmm. clash. All right, I'm trying to make, I, this is the reason why I did this test because it's the same way in college. Again, Nathaniel's told you, y'all have to, it's not what y'all want the answer to be. Teachers, when they give you a test, they're looking for the answer that they want. Not the, the answer you want to give, the answer that's provided within the text mm -hmm. and provided by what's actually within the literature base, all right? Mm -hmm. Give an example of critical pedagogy. This one should be open. All right. Um, engaging in ideologies that result in reductionistic views, like views on identity. Okay, I'll, I'll take that. I put a uh, teacher engaging in a discussion with students that um, is related to critical thinking, such as a way in which your democracy functions or various other topics. Okay. Har Harper actually gets the real point for that. Next person. I put one example of critical pedagogy is not a following the teacher-student contradiction and seeing students and not seeing students as mere objects. It's like changing that. Only person that get that answer was Harper. I was looking Wait. for an actual Wait. example. What? what did you say, Sam? I said engaging in ideologies that result in reductionist views, such as views uh, on okay, identity. Okay. No, 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 no. okay, you're right. I did give you that. You're right. So um, Harper and Sam got that one. What are the different? Um, what are the major differences between banking education and problem posing education, according to Paul Fear? I wrote a full on paragraph on this. Okay. Anybody? I got you. Um, banking system sees students as empty buckets that the teacher directly fills with knowledge while not engaging in dialogue with them. Problem posing education engages in dialogue and breaks down the strict teacher teaches student ideals of the banking system to start dialogical educational talks between the student and the teacher where both of them learn from each other. That's right on the nose, Sam. Anybody else have that answer? Good, I'm proud of you guys for like answering all these questions. Um, no one has missed a question yet, so that's good. Um, anybody want to take the next one? This one I gave already as an dialogue. Answer. Easy. Dialogue, yes. <laughs> what is the core element of pedagogy is dialogue? What is the difference between humanitarianism and humanism besides Sam? Hello, this is fun one. Humanitarianism, Go ahead, humanitarianism Harper. centers on like charity and the idea of like helping the oppressed, whereas humanism focuses on the idea of um, 
solidarity within the oppressed and fighting up against oppression. Yes, good job, Harper. That is so amazing. Yeah, and, and um, to give you another word to use in um, future like conversations about this scholarship, um, it's about empowering, <laughs> empowering the oppressed, right? So that's another word you can use. But I like the, the word that you use better, which is to find solidarity with the oppressed. That's amazing, yes. You hit it right on the nose, Harper. Good job. Anybody have any similar answers to that? Um, I wrote that humanitarianism works within a hegemony of violence to deliver utilitarian aid to those um, that the very system is harming. It also gives humanitarianism a false sense of generosity, even though they continue to contribute to systems. Yes, good job, Sam. Like yes, it. yes, yes, exactly. That's the thing. See, now, th there we go, Sam. That's the, that word generosity was the exact word I was looking for. Um, and, we're talk, and we're gonna talk more about that. But yes, good job, good answer. Good, anybody have any other answers? Ella, do you wanna share your answer? Um, my, I don't think I got it right. I said humanitarianism focus around, focuses around people participating in good. <laughs> sorry, in good deeds for the benefit of others, while humanism is about emphasizing human needs as well as being respectful and kind. At least that's what Google told me. Yeah, and, and this is, not, remember, this is as it relates to Paulo Freire's scholarship. All right, Brazil was prim primarily dominated in modern times by what European country? Brazil. It's uh, Portugal. Portugal, yep, good job. Actually, Germany, yeah. <laughs> that was someone else. Krakenhausen. <laughs> um, de what defines an oppressor? Um, I'll take that one if no one else. Yeah, go ahead, Sam. Those who limit the humanity of another human being. This has been done by systems like slavery, which view humans as property. This is fundamentally dehumanizing, and it is dehumanizing is oppressive. Therefore, people inflicting dehumanization upon another human are oppressors. That's a good answer. Yep. Anybody else? Um, this is found on page 55 of the actual text. Um, and so this is what um, Paulo Freire, this is when he starts to define what um, an oppressor is. So if you're in the PDF, this would probably be, be on page 50. There's a two page difference, right? So if it's on 55, it's gonna be on page 53 in the PDF. And he states <laughs> that an oppressor is an, any authority, a group or a person that uses his power unjust, unjustly to keep people under control, many rebellious, um, teenagers view their parents as oppressors, but the <laughs> the work the world the but the word usually used to refer um, to dictators. So it's about a matter of dictatorship. All right. Yep. Um, can the oppressed become the oppressor? Of course. Yes. 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 But then they both the oppressor and the oppressed will not be free. It's only by the oppressed realizing their own oppression. And fighting up against that oppression can both the oppressed and the oppressor be free. But if the oppressed become the oppressor, then it doesn't work. Yep, use that that's why. I round. Go ahead. I'm sorry, Sam. Well, I said use that in the debate round. That'd be good for us. Yeah, yeah, but also to add on to it, like right, like that's why you you do this every round. That's why we continue to have conversations like this. That's why we take these types of conversations outside of our debate rounds into the real world, because it is important for us to continue to do it because of, of the nature of, you know, just as quickly as someone is the oppressed, is that, is that as quickly as someone can become the oppressed. So that's why it's important for us to engage in that form of praxis on a reiterative basis, because whiteness also operates on a reiterative basis. Um, yeah. So Paula Freire was a student of philosophy at the university. True or false? Um, I said false. It's true. He actually studied um, oh, really? philosophy. Anybody else get um, true? Yeah, I did true. Yeah. Yep, he was a studier of philosophy. He studied um, philosophy and education. Cool. Because um, remember, he read a lot of Plato and he read a lot of Marxism. Yeah. 
All right, what is fear's what is fear's critical consciousness? Um it's the idea that um, we call the idea to question a system um, that someone is placed in. For example, the baking system takes away the student's critical critical we call it, takes away the students' critical consciousness by not allowing the students to have dialogue about the education they're receiving. Yeah, and remember these things that you're saying that's happening within the real world, you need to be saying that they do this in debate because that these things that, you know, there are forms of banking education system that um, restricts a person's critical thinking. So if a person's yelling voter, voters for fairness in education, you need to be like, uh-uh, ain't no education here because there's no critical thinking here, right? You're depositing this normative style of debate that's been happening for eons and we need to change that right yeah but yeah good job sam anybody else want to add to sam's um answer ella you want to add to it or tell us what you got no i don't think i got it right i just talked about thinking and reflecting it wasn't really it's okay it's okay girl you won the last activity i still got to add your um things in um next anybody else Harper, you want to add any thoughts? All right, uh, no problem. No. Okay, we can keep going. I'll just provide you my answer. That's in the answer key. Critical consciousness is developed by, of course, we know who it's developed by. It's an educational pedagogy to liberate the masses from systematic inequality maintained and perpetuated by process practices and outcomes of interindependent systems and institutions. So yeah, Sam, you got that right. Um. Why does Polyphere title the book Pedagogy of the Press instead of Pedagogy for the Oppressed? <laughs> because that would be a further act of oppression because it would be a form of uh, humanitarianism instead of a form of humanism. The, uh, because it would be suggesting that like this is the way that the oppressed should live their lives and it would be or something and I um, and it would be it would basically be another a further form of oppression yeah wow I, oh my gosh harper the way you are just improving my day yes yes standing ovation i'm so proud of you girl go ahead and <laughs> yes 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 and i'm really happy that you were able to um obt obtain this information this is not it's kind of dense and it's not you know this is philosophical points of view and you're grappling with college level work so Congratulations to everyone on really being able to get these questions answered. I'm y'all haven't missed any answers yet still. So mm -hmm. I'm really proud of y'all for um grappling with the text. All right, finish the sentence. Do we do the do we do the okay? Yeah, yeah. So this is the one we're doing next. All right, finish the sentence. Liberation must blank be, um must blank. So what it what should liberation do? What's the answer? Stem from revolutionary vision of transformative dialogue. C. Nope. No? Nope. I thought it was D because Yes! Um, it's, it's the ghost! Yes! Trust that, um, all, that the efforts must stem from uh, like the oppressed must first realize that they are oppressed and then take action for their own liberation. Oh my gosh, Harper. Yes! Good job! You really did do well with this reading. Good job, Harper. Yes. I'm really proud of you. Yes. So yes, it was D. It must stem from the practices that are organized by the oppressed yep good job harper all right um i, mean, I think we call it i don't know it seems like it's both though i i would be trying to trick you it's a trick well no it's because actually, it doesn't explicitly imply that's the section you read them from there's there's a lot of parts of it that say liberation must stem from revolutionary vision of transformative dialogue. Yes, yes, like yes. That is something that's repeated over and over yes, again. I know, I know. I so know. Don't don't, don't <laughs> you nah, nah, it's C and D, because that's bullshit. You have to actually say what you're talking about in the question if you're gonna put two right answers to it. Come on now, Athena. <laughs> Causing problems. Mm. It was done on purpose, but you are supposed to sift through. This is why I'm trying to teach you study skills and test taking skills. Latino, I did direct. 
direct to what the you're supposed to look. also there was a study guide provided so mm -hmm. it's based on what is calling for um based on um Bettina, what's the also too also too, when you take a test there's one answer that that is better than the other right and that's always true about tests so <laughs> You know, as a person who's been through college and high school, as, as a person who tell you, teachers do that for good reason. And so I'm trying to have y'all practice how this the college one, teacher is going to do it. The college this is going to one's do either now. ridiculously close or just simply subjective on your end, because that's crazy. <laughs> that's not subjective. That's, that's crazy, man. I'm so serious. That's the really the answer. answer on this one. Harper just gave you the answer. All right, moving <laughs> on. What is humanity in terms of Paulo Fier? Sam, you want to answer it? Uh, is that the question? Yeah, what is humanity in terms of fear? I think we're on what does it mean to be oppressed? Oh, I'm sorry, you're right. Go ahead. What does it mean to be oppressed? Um, C. Is that what I got? Yes, that's correct, Sam. C. Anybody else get anything different? <laughs> So yes, what does it mean to be oppression? Uh, means to be oppressed. Oppression means your freedoms, wants, and desires are carried out by others who power over your actions. Where are we at? All right, we have five thirty-seven. Mathena, what was option five? Yeah, what was option five? <laughs> the wrong answer. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so moving on. What is humanity in terms of rear? Um, humanity is the ability to live your life unimpeded by oppression and not be dehumanized. Uh, I put that humanity is um, being free and being engaged in a dialogue. What did you say, Sam? Um, yes, Harper, you get both points for that because it was a two-part answer. You got both of them. Sam, what did you get? Humanity is your ability to live your life unimpeded by oppression and not being dehumanized. Yes, you did both of them, technically. Um, yes. All right, cool. And not to be humanized means to, you know, critical think and dialogue. All right. Yes. All right. You got the answer. But make sure you're more direct in some of these answers, Sam. Um, mm -hmm. um, was fear a Marxist provide yes or no with an explanation? I said no because he was a humanist. And those are different ideologies. Uh, I put no because his ideology doesn't uh, bogus or address capitalism. Okay, anybody else? Ella, what you get? That's not necessarily true. I didn't know who Marx was, so I skipped it. <laughs> okay. I've heard so, about Marx everywhere, but I, I, mean, never, I think like, his ideologies do like address capitalism. It's just not explicitly. And then also Marxism has all this other crazy shit because it's a bunch of white bullshit yeah, as far as like colorblindness and whatnot. And he doesn't subscribe to that. He's a humanist. Yeah. I, I Honestly, Sam, I, I, I agree with um, both of you. I don't think he's fundamentally, and, and, here, and this is just coming from my subjective point of view um, and based on what the, the, the answer was, honestly, let me just say this too. These answers were not answers that I came up with. I like actually had to search these answers, whether it was from the book or um, I took some of these questions from other exams. So um, I didn't just make this up, but um, I'm going to say y'all both get the answer. And here's why, because the actual answer, what do I have here? What, where are we at? So I said, no, uh, Paula Fieri um, contributed to philosophies of education, which blended approaches stemming from Plato's uh, Plato and modern Marxist, post-Marxist, and anti-colonialist. So I'm going to say um, the reason why Harper is correct, Sam, is because he stems from, um, he does have some, um, he does have moments where he's post-Marxist, which is kind of like not related to Marxism. It's like some other thing. Um, and also, too, with him being anti-colonialist, I just, I think, y'all, basically, I think y'all both right. That's all. Yeah. I, think, I think, yes, it, um, by by Marxist standards, it seems as if he's addressing it, but he's not really addressing Marxism um, because he has some other fundamental things. So in terms of humanism, um, and that stuff comes in. So yeah, I yeah. agree. I think y'all both are right. That's what I'm saying. 
Cool. So yes, y'all both got that answer. Both y'all said no. So that's the answer I'm looking for. Whatever explanation y'all provided after that, I think he would agree with both of y'all, honestly. Cool. Um, what right. are the ideas of peers of, of fears pedagogy of the oppressed? I feel like you already asked this one, but um, it's to combat oppression with the dialogical revolution. Yep, that's basically it. Okay, that's basically it. Okay, um, and these were questions from the video. What is a critical tool for education? You missed one. Oh, what what is problem posing education? Um dialogical education wherein there's a dialogue between teacher and student and all parties learn good job um anybody have any other question um anything else to add ella did you have anything else to add nope harper did you have anything else to add not really so problem posing education i do have something to add is basically what it says it's like i i, I find you problematic and i'm gonna pose a problem What's up? What you doing is racist. What you doing is sexist. We about to have a problem. So I'm going to pose a problem with you. So I'm gonna mirror. <laughs> I sound like I sound like one of them guys from Greece. Anyways, um, uh, it's you, you it's basically confronting right white whiteness and challenging not just whiteness but any form of sy sy systematic forms of oppression and really calling it to um to mirror itself so that it can under understand that it has negative implications. Yeah. Yep. So that's just my my little extra two cents. But yeah, everybody <laughs> got the answer. Good job. Everybody's still getting all the answers. All right. What is the what is the critical tool for education? Dialogue. Saying, there you go. Dialogue. We've been saying all. Yep. 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 An active community is prompted by what? Mm. I said dialogue. Yes! <laughs> I was trying to trick you again. Yes, it's dialogue. <laughs> because you can't get to education or oppression or liberation without what? Without, yeah. Without dialogue. Good job, you all. I'm really happy that you all um, have grappled with it. So tomorrow we'll try to cut some of this evidence. And um, those who have missed it, they'll be prompted to review our YouTube pages and get um, in tune with what they've missed. Um, does anybody want to answer some of these bonus questions? Yeah. The only one I got to answer was, in what city did he die? Because that's the only thing I had time for. And where did he die? Sao Paulo. And yep. I did not look that up, mind you, Mathino. I Good. never heard that somehow. Good. I would have put in Recifa, but that's where he was born. So I would have got that wrong. Um, <laughs> and I created this test. Just so <laughs> anyway, um, does anyone want to answer the next question? I mean, off the top of my head, I didn't write nothing though. How, you know, just off the top of your head. Let's see. How does knowledge codify knowledge to codify otherness? Does that even work? I don't even know what that means. We're not going to do that one. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I don't even know what that meant. Okay. Uh, <laughs> explain how critical pedagogy can be used as a tool within ah, all the debate go. rounds. Um, well, I mean, it can use it as, like, a good tool because you can say that the other team is, you know, upholding conversations and they're trying to shut the neg into you know only talking about nato only talking about these oppressive powers and that is not having active dialogue within a debate round um and so they're trying to shut us out of the debate and that lack of active dialogue means that they're being oppressive and that they're not following pedagogy of the oppressed or a critical pedagogy of um you know of, we call it the oppressed and stuff like that so you know they're bad Vote for us. <laughs> Anybody else? Ella? As a, you, an argument? Yeah, like how could, well, not as, you know, yeah, as an argument or as a, just any type of tool as debate, how can pedagogy uh, of the, or, or critical pedagogy um, be used as a useful tool? Or maybe I'll I'll do one better. How is it, how can it be a useful tool in any community? It don't have to be just debate. 
it's like, it's how you think about it. If you think about the like dialogue aspect, that's literally can be used anywhere. And reflection and action that's literally used anywhere. In terms of a debate round, I think everything like about this book just falls under your framework. And like roll the ballot stuff and stuff like that. Well, yep, I told you all that this book has been very instrumental in the work that I do, not just within debate, but within the non nonprofit arena, and also has helped me um, become a better activist as well and a social practitioner. So just to piggyback off of what Ella said, um, yes, this is a tool that you can use in your everyday actions. And that's what it actually tells you to do. That's the point of this book is it tells you that you're supposed to do this type of reflective, critical type of thinking all the time, because that's the only way that you can create the best um, manifestations of liberation and proper forms of education, because education is, is power, okay? Okay, now <laughs> answer the question. I, 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 um, so we call it the tutor student, um, we call it contradiction in banking system in particular is basically that there is no dialogue and that there's no active conversations between the teacher and the student and the teacher essentially thinks the students you know just kind of dumb they don't have any of their own opinions or ideas that they're not human and that they can just insert all these ideas into the student's mind and similarly this is similar to oppressor and oppression because the oppressor views the oppressed as not human it views them as not having their own ideas and viewpoints and need for, you know, humanistic activities. Instead, the oppressor views them as things. And that might be, you know, in a system like slavery, it might be in a system like capitalism. Either way, they view um, the oppressed as, you know, less than human. And it's similar to the teacher-student contradiction because both of them view the, um, we call it, the students viewed as less than human, the oppressed is viewed as less than human. And they're both trying to, you know, manipulate, how um, we call it, their form of power, their form of hegemony to keep the oppression in the balance. Anybody else? Damn, it got dark. <laughs> Is this what I look like? I look like I'm just like hidden in darkness. It's not completely dark, though. There's a window behind me. You can see some light coming in. Nobody else has any um, more points on the last bonus question? No? Nope. All right. Well, yeah. So um, the teacher can be the oppressor. Also, the teacher could also be the oppressed, right? Because teachers work with superintendents. Maybe the superintendents aren't listening to the teacher maybe well it implicitly your question implies teacher student relationship okay not well, teacher supervisor intendant dish not citizen supervisor no just teacher student well i'm just saying well, well the student <laughs> but the, also too the student is just not okay well if we're talking about that relationship then maybe there but also too like what i'm what i'm trying to say is too that also like what if the kid <laughs> acts up right or the kid is just acting off the walls crazy and taking advantage of the teacher or you know whatever or making fun of a teacher's disability maybe there's a teacher with a disability right like you know um either way what i'm saying is that there's a lot of independent variables and so you know if you are a student you should also be reflecting on the position that your teacher has and how difficult it can be to have their job sometimes right so yeah mm -hmm. It's also reminding yourself that your teachers are human too. Even though they're doing a the job, they're human, right? So, all righty. Well, um, I didn't think that was gonna take as long as it did. Um, but no, you can't see me anymore, can you? No. No, we cannot. But um, that took as long as, I, long as I, I didn't think it was gonna take that long for us to do all that stuff. But um, I want to talk about some of the reading some more, but we'll, <laughs> End it there. Those of you who will be coming to practice tomorrow will get started on cutting some of this text. Start trying to get together, uh, put together a file so we can work together as a league on getting, you know, we might not ever use it. Y'all should use the file, but um, 
those who don't tend to use a file still you should learn how to again learn how to start creating an argument from start to scratch but um start to finish i said start to scratch from start to finish from scratch to finish but you should also um feel comfortable working together as a league and we should you know try to accomplish something together as the open division and, and feel good getting something accomplished so we'll split off into like uh, different chapters. I don't know. We'll probably break out, break people out into three, three or four groups, and have everybody um, try to find cards that they think they can cut from those chapters. And then that's what we'll do tomorrow. And then um, I was talking to Nathaniel because I won't be here at one of the practices for Berkeley, so he's going to be in substitution of um, not next Thursday, but one of the Thursdays coming up. And um, he's just going to do some like block writing activities with you all. So um, if you are like needing to like, th if you're, there's like arguments you're not prepared for or arguments that you've heard thus far, please try to write out a little draft starting now because I'm actually again next Thursday. If you don't like, just get started writing with whatever, whatever you need. Like talk to your partner and be like, what things have we don't have, that do we not have answers to? Or what things have we fumbled in last debates that we could do better in the next debates? And write a list, write a checklist out of stuff that you need and just start on knocking it down. Um, Nathaniel is going to provide y'all, he's going to listen to these speeches, like some of these mock speeches, provide you feedback. And then hopefully you'll have time if there's not a lot of pe a lot of people within that practice. If there are a lot of people in that practice, fine. You you'll do like you'll be able to read a speech, get some feedback one time. Um, but if there's not enough people, then hopefully you'll be able to give that speech twice to get you know optimum amount of criticism, so you can do your best at Berkeley or Stanford. When are we giving a speech? It'll be sometime in February. Don't worry about it. So not this next week, but probably the week after next, I guess. 